All right, horsey, back we go. You know what? I betcha. I betcha. We're gonna do it. Here we go. I'm gonna go on the F5, though, to make sure I'm right over it. Okay, very good, and... Away we go! Hey there, Brewberries, what's up, and welcome to another episode of Hardcore Minecraft. So, first off... Brewberries. Yes, I think that is going to be the name. It seems like the majority of folks who wanted to have their input heard have said Brewberries, at least in dis both Discord and on YouTube. That is just the majority. Um, and so we're going to go with Brewberries, I think. And I, I decided to play around with making a funny little graphic thing for it. If I remember to put it up, I'll try to. Uh, but it's basically just a what, 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 what do you want? I don't like it when you're behind me like that, bro. That's kind of strange. But I made a little graphic that is basically just like a play on the, the Pixel Brew sort of logo thing, but is more based around being a brewberry. Uh, and I thought that was kind of a funny thing. Thank you, anybody who suggested other names. And uh, definitely we can hold on to those for any other potential uh, use cases. But we are going to go with brewberries uh, just because of the majority. So... Thank you, and I uh, hope you guys all enjoy the name Brewberries. I think it's a fun thing, and it makes my intro feel more, you know, fun to say. Last episode, we built this gargantuan aqueduct that goes from our villager breeder all the way over through this way. It is still not complete because we don't have the keep um, made, and so didn't go ahead and uh, continue it or anything off camera because I don't know what that's going to look like exactly. I don't know where the keep's going to be, um, but... What we did get done is pretty freaking epic. And I've been doing a little bit of work trying to figure out if I want to do any sort of texture variation. Um, I think I've come to a decision. So I was trying out diorite with the andesite because it's a lighter color um, and andesite is lighter and it already looks a little weathered. And I think the decision I've come to is I love this. I like adding in, so the mossy on the, anywhere there's water or is near grass, I think makes sense. Um, and then throwing in cracked stone brick and regular stone throughout the uh, stone brick sections, I think is a good call. I think that adds a nice weathered effect, makes it feel like it's a little bit more, makes it feel like it's a little older. Um, but I don't think I want to change up the andesite. I think that that should just remain andesite. It already looks fairly weathered with the andesite texture. And so I think that is perfectly fine. Maybe we'll throw in the occasional like cobblestone or something um but i don't think I, I just there's no wall texture that really fits super well with it so i think sticking with andesite is probably the best call i have also solved the ice problem we were having and that was a very simple fix i just threw in some slabs and uh, you can't really tell that they're there but having slab waterlogged slabs prevents ice from forming because it can't form as a full block and so it will always be ice. And so all the way down until a, a little bit into the actual plains biome over here is the slabs. And then I, I w didn't go ahead and do it all the way down because it wasn't necessary. Um, but I also started throwing in some mossy stuff up here as a sort of because water's here. I think adding mossy along the top here and then also along the other side here would be a good call because then I think it'll make more sense um, with the where the water is is going to be a little mossier and I think that makes more sense I just about ran off the edge that's okay there's water down there um, but that is how and then yeah you can see now there is absolutely no slabs and so it kind of just stops right there but because we're in the plains biome there is no freezing that happened and happens here so I think we're good. And if there is any freezing, we'll just bring it back up to slab level. And I think that will be good. But what are we doing today? Well, I have a problem I need to fix here. And if we go in here, this, this is the problem. Look at all these beautiful tools that are going to waste because they're so low. So we have our diamond pick here that is 
at two durability. We have this one, 168, but it's our fortune one, so I kept it a little higher, so if anything, we could use it still. And then this guy, Sylvester Stallone, the only mending pickaxe we have that is the perfect pickaxe, is at six durability. I would like to fix that today, and I have a great way to do that. So as you can imagine, gathering all that stone definitely took up all of our pickaxes. I mean, I'm currently using an unenchanted pickaxe, if that tells you anything. I don't have enough levels to enchant a new one. I don't have enough levels to fix the pickaxes, because I think Sylvester Stallone has been repaired once. He's already a beefy pickaxe, and so he kind of requires like 30 levels or something like that. So it's just a pain to continue doing it that way. So we're not going to. What I have found down this way, if we go down into our, well, this is where I was. I was uh, originally trying to find andesite for our, in caves and stuff, for our aqueduct and i i sort of discovered uh, if you go find a mountain biome you can find plenty of andesite in the mountain biome there is literally no need for you to wander around in caves and stuff especially hardcore world cave grinding is way more dangerous uh than and uh, not worth it if you can do it safely on the surface so would recommend that but i Made, it, made my way down here, and there was a big andesite patch, as you can imagine, and I just it was here for a while, and I was like, I'm hearing a lot of spider hisses, like a lot, and so I thought, maybe there's a cave, maybe there, and there were some zombies and stuff, so I was like, oh, maybe a cave or something, but then we poke our head right here, boom, spider spawner, and so everything's already lit and uh, ready to be demolished. And uh, this is what we're doing today. We are making a spider farm. Now I haven't looted this fully yet. So we got a name tag, we can finally name our dog. I may make a texture for texture pack purely to use in this world and potentially I'll add the texture into the actual Pixelburg texture pack um, that when I name a dog Mavericks, I may change it so that he actually, the dog becomes Mavericks and looks like him. I'm not going to do any remodeling or anything. I would primarily just do uh, t actual texture change, but I thought that could be kind of fun. Uh, so we got some pretty decent stuff here. And by decent, I mean not really anything but the name tags. Decent. The, this C41813 disc is all right. Uh, what is in this one? So another C41813 disc. That's kind of sad. But this one, we got cat. Nice. And a new saddle. That's good, and melons. Actually, that's really good because we don't have access to melons. So now we have access to melons and pumpkins, and we got two free buckets out of it. So this is actually not that bad. But this is what we're gonna be doing today. And so let me run you through a little bit of what I'm thinking. All right, so this pillar right here of cobblestone that's right next to our chickens, which, how much how much food do we have in here? Uh, yeah, okay, not a wonderful amount. <laughs> More feathers than anything. Yeah, that this may be a bust. I don't really know. I'm probably going to just make like a cow breeder thing and just do it that way for food. But back to the task at hand. This pillar is exactly where the spider spawner is. Kind of crazy how far you actually come going down and you don't really realize it, but I guess it makes sense. Um, so this is exactly where the spider spawner is further down. It's like at 20, I think uh, neg uh, almost 20 um, in Y level. And so we've got a little ways to go. And so what I'm thinking is somewhere around here, we are going to make a sort of, uh, going along with this sort of old kingdom type of ruin aspect, um, I'm thinking we'll make like a sort of ruined house that has all these cobwebs and stuff and feels just like very abandoned and nobody's really uh, taken up on uh, building into it. Uh, and so I think what we'll do, or maybe what we'll do is make it like somebody's made it storage or something like that. And so I don't know exactly what I wanna do with the landscape here since it is so janky, but I'm thinking maybe what we do is we kind of like shear this off, flatten out down here and make that into sort of a uh, the the ruinous structure so that we the main thing that I the reason I want to do this up here is because I want this to be the entrance to the spider farm I guess uh, because I want it to just be like a drop shoot that we can just drop down and then a bubble column to come back up uh, that we can kind of have hidden away 
um, but makes a little bit of sense. And so what I'm thinking is like, you know, in the Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time, there is the sort of the uh, Skultola house. I'm thinking of doing kind of like a sort of representation of that. And uh, not it's not going to be a complete house or anything, but similar vibe of like very abandoned, very spidery feeling um, with cobwebs and all sorts of stuff. Um, and then making it so that it just feels like the town, the town's abandoned it. Nobody goes into it. And there's like some sort of like weird vibe that people get from it from it. And so they kind of just avoid refurbishing it. And there's good reason for that because it's it leads to our spider farm. And so I'm going to go ahead and get to figuring out some logistics as to what in the world we want this terrain to be doing. Um, and then I think we should be good to get a building. say don't you dare fall off is this sketchy yes is it necessary no is it fun yes all right horsey back we go you know what i bet you i bet you we're gonna do it here we go I'm going to go on the F5, though, to make sure I'm right over it. Okay, very good. And away we go. Well, that was anticlimactic, but fun. After much building and planning and stuff, the outer structure is done, as you can see. Very ruinous looking. I extended the aqueduct as well because I felt like you needed it there to get a good feeling as to how this feels, kind of being close to it. So here is our ruin. And so I wanted to make this feel very, very different than what our normal villagers' houses feel like. Now, obviously, there's no roof or anything to it but I wanted it to feel much sturdier um, and much more advanced, hence why we're using mainly stone bricks and actual stone instead of this cobblestone material um, because I just wanted it to feel just, yeah, more advanced. I wanted it to feel like these people were actually like able to make something like this, uh, whereas these derps wouldn't be able to do a thing on their own without me. So we've got a nice, ruinous building right here and i think it's looking pretty good i did leave occasional bits of wood um, to indicate just kind of maybe some structure that's not been hit by all the forces overall there's no wood or any material like that that would survive now this is also very close to the aqueduct um, and i kind of want to include more buildings like this maybe that are like butted up against to the aqueduct um, and utilizing its structure as almost a shelter in a sense. Um, but maybe that is where these villagers can kind of come into play with a little bit different of a style where they are actually utilizing the aqueduct itself for something. I don't know. Now, if we go in here, you'll notice I'd put granite, terracotta, and brick into the floor and this is intentional. So I wanted to do that to indicate how in the world they were getting something like terracotta. So, and granite, I suppose. Um, for some of the builds, I want to include those types of materials, but I wanted to have a sort of explanation. And so my sort of concept is they are harvesting this from, maybe they there were some previous, there were a lot of buildings and over time they've harvested the terracotta and the granite to utilize in their own builds um, on top of the normal stone and granite and stuff. Um, and so I wanted to give like a little bit of a sort of nod explanation as to how they're using the terracottas in their builds. But this is what it looks like. Very ruinous, kind of leaves everywhere, grass growing all over the place. Very, very nice. 
Um, but as you can see, we have our bubble column to get down to the Spidey farm. And then we have our drop column, which I need to replace this. I'm gonna replace up down the, these two dirt areas here with some stone, uh, but I'll do that off camera. Uh, so if we drop down here, boop, there we are. And you can see I've been doing some building. So the farm itself is actually ready to go. Uh, I didn't really want to do, because I was looking up a tutorial and stuff and it's not, I'll explain it, but I'm not going to really go super in depth. Um, if you, I'll leave a link to the uh, tutorial that I followed. It was a Waddles tutorial. Uh, and so very simple to follow, very easy. So definitely will uh, leave a link to that if you want to check it out. But the concept I'm going for here is you kind of fall down and the entrance doesn't really make sense for this, but I wanted it to feel kind of like maybe a little bit of a story as to why this is here. Uh, and so you kind of fall down and this is going to be cavernous feeling. It's not going to be a square like this. Um, I'm going to make it feel very cavernous. Um, and so it's going to be just kind of this tunnel that breaks out into an abandoned mine shaft. And so we're going to have two entrances, two like shafts that have collapsed here. Um, and then we're going to have one that we can go down, which leads to the spider farm, which is, is going to be where I store all the stuffs for it. Uh, and so just having some indication as to where pillars and stuff are going to be, but this is the farm itself um, They will if we can get around inside as you can see this is the farm itself So got a quite a tall ceiling to prevent any sort of spawning and or climbing around um, and then also this water area here not necessary if you have a tall ceiling but I wanted to include it anyway since I already had a lot of fence gates made um, essentially the when this is not lit like this what will happen is the spiders will uh, spawn and then fall down into the water they'll get rushed into this area here um, and then some of the times the water since they'll they may spawn out here and kind of just flow down like this and hit the wall and then spiders will just climb walls that they touch um, and so what I wanted to do was if they hit this wall and then they would climb all the way up, they'll climb straight up to the top regardless of if there's water. Um, but that's not good because if they're just chilling up there, they're taking up the mob cap for this and then it kind of ruins the farm. So the water's up there so that they will get kind of stuck up there and they'll drown. And then if they actually drop uh, string and stuff as well, they'll just fall back down and get filtered in because there's a hopper system and stuff. So very simple, I did not decorate it at all. I mean, never, I'm gonna close this up, kill all the torches and we're never going to see it again, um, except for from that perspective down there. And there we go, we are able to kill the spiders as much as we want. So I broke all the torches out there, added some chains on top of the spawner and now you can see it is working beautifully and we can kill all of these spiders i think i may add some add, add like a slab layer here just to make it so that i can get on top actually let's try that out let's see if that actually works before i get on into the building process oh yeah that works way way better i can actually attack and just kind of stand here and kill them and then we get xp and plenty of drops so that is good so i'm gonna go ahead get into the building process and uh fully mob proof all of this decorate it out and uh, let's go ahead and do that in a little bit of a time lapse
Alrighty, y'all, you ready to see the final result? It's real creepy. It's actually gonna be a bit dark, so I'll probably have to adjust the gamma settings in the recording itself. Um, also, anything you hear that is zombie underneath there, uh, I didn't light up underneath, so I need to go under there at some point. But let's go ahead and get on in to our XP and Spidey farm. Let's do it. Looky here, isn't this? pretty insane. So this is uh, the reason it can be so dark is because pretty much everything is slabs or buttons and or pressure plates. So there's no zero spawnable spots in this entire build, which is great. And it makes it so we can play with lighting. And so we have some redstone torches hidden around to give us some light and to make it so it's at least manageable, but makes it so that it is dimly lit and pretty atmospheric i do have to say so so we've got the cave part here but then you kind of break in through this little crack here you break in and you can see oh we are maybe now in a little bit of a mine shaft so we've got a little bit of left remnant uh rails here with a couple of mine carts and then we can get on in right here to the farm. Decided to not do anything with the floor, like all that craziness, just because I think the entrance needs to be like that, but then this be nice to move around. We have plenty of storage areas with all of these different barrels and the couple of chests here. We have barrels in the ceiling. Crafting table is hidden up top. And then this is the lone light, just to make sure everything in this particular area is barred off from being spawnable and so it is working wonderfully you can see silk vester still alone here almost full health and uh, i've just been over time uh it, the nice thing is uh, while i've been building this the spiders have been building up and they're actually far enough away from the uh spawner that the spawner doesn't seem to care that much about the spiders being near it uh, so they must be just like the perfect amount away from it to be okay with the spawner putting out more spiders. Because generally it's like, I think there can only be six mobs um, there. And uh, yeah, you can see we've gotten quite a bit of string. So if we ever need wool or anything, uh, and some sometimes skeletons spawn, which isn't a bad thing. It's nice to have at least a, a small supply of bones and arrows and stuff. But this is the spider farm and I am really happy with this build. I think it looks really cool. Um, I would highly, highly recommend if if you are building a mob spawner farm, decorate it out. Make it feel super cool because I mean, imagine you come, I'm gonna come down here so often and I get to experience this atmospheric adventure almost every single time. So I would highly recommend you build something around your mob spawner to be like, uh, at least make it a little bit of a journey for yourself because you're going to be here a lot. So that's going to do it for this episode, guys. I am definitely ready to take a little bit of a break, kill some spideys and stuff. And now I think I'm going to go ahead in between episodes, get a mending villager so we can get mending on all of our tools so we don't have to continually be using diamonds. But thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked the video, leave a like. And if you are new here, feel free to subscribe. Join the little family we've got going here. And I will see you guys in the next episode. Uh, bye bye.